Good afternoon, everyone. It is Lola King over at Bekind Botanicals, and I'm hopping on to answer another question that we got from our Q&A Wednesday, which was yesterday. This one was a really good one, and there's a whole lot that really goes into blending. And so I wanted to make sure that I address this question because it's pretty common that most of us, when we're searching online, especially when we're looking at different websites and we see, oh my gosh, there's this recipe, this sounds amazing and you wanna make it, but then you go and you look in your stash and you're missing one of those oils. What do you do? Well, more specifically, I think the bigger question is, can you just substitute any old oil? You know, is there is there a difference? Does it matter that much? There's a lot of layers to this. And so I wanna get into this. And the first thing I wanna say is that when you talk about making these recipes and you're missing a specific essential oil, you have to ask yourself one question. Are you looking for a psychological reaction? You know, that, that emotional feel good kind of reaction or are you looking for a physiological action to occur? That Those two questions alone are going to ultimately decide whether you can substitute something or not and what you wanna substitute it with. So for example, if you're looking to create a really soothing, relaxing blend in the evening and it calls for ylang lang and you don't have it, well, one, look at the ingredients you have and you can decide just from blending what you have whether you need to add that or not, right? Or you can look at it from a physiological standpoint and say, does what I have get the job done? You know, so those two things you can look at. The other aspect of following these recipes is, let's say you get to an oil like rosewood, and I see this a lot, and this one really, really, really is a big deal, and it's the sustainability factor. Rosewood, if you find it in a recipe and you don't have rosewood, here's the one thing I'm gonna ask you. How badly do you need an essential oil that is obtained from a plant that's pretty much extinct. It's done. There's We have less than 300 on the planet and there's pretty much no coming back from where we've put this plant. So you have to ask yourself, you know, is it that necessary for me to have that particular oil, you know? I mean, for example, I tend to, when somebody says, oh, I really like the smell of rosewood, First thing I grab is how would it does not smell identical to it, but I can always add other essential oils to the how would to make it smell like rosewood. There's always a way to get around some of these things. And yes, like I said before, you really have to look at whether you're looking at the physiological aspect of a recipe or whether you're looking at the psychological aspect, you know, what it what it's doing for you. And when it comes to sustainability, there are a couple oils that I just, I won't touch and I don't offer because the sustainability issues are just too hard for me to get over. And I know for me as a seller, if I am ignoring the concerns around sustainability with certain plants, then I'm just adding to the issues that are happening right now on the user end of it. So that's one other thing. The other thing that I think is really important that doesn't get talked about enough, and this is probably because we're, you know, as users, we don't think about it, but the chemistry of something. When you go to substitute something and you don't have a particular oil, go and search and find out what the chemistry is. You know, is it, is the majority of it linalool and esters? You know, find out what the two major constituents are and see if you can find something that might be similar if you're looking at the physiological aspects of an oil. And if it's something, you know, where you're looking at the psychological aspects, obviously chemistry is not gonna be as important, but the chemistry does play a big part in that. So those are some factors to really consider when you get to a recipe that you really want to make because it sounds amazing. You know, is it is it a recipe that I'm looking for so a psychological reaction to, a physiological reaction to, is the essential oil and in one that's comes from a plant that's endangered, is there a sustainability concern? And 
what's the chemistry of this oil that I'm missing? Is there something that I can find that might be suitable? And that will really help you determine whether you can substitute that oil or whether you absolutely have to have it. Um, I hope that helps to answer that question. I love answering these questions. These are really, really helpful. I know for a lot of users, I've gotten a lot of great feedback from them. So keep asking them. There's no such thing as a silly question because let me tell you, <laughs> I ask silly questions all the time until I can go down the right rabbit hole to find the answer I need. So I will talk to you guys later and keep those questions coming. Have a great rest of your day.